Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you the best OBS settings for recording in 2025 for OBS 31.0.4. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now when we are in OBS itself right here, I actually want to go ahead and go to settings here. As you can see, first of all, we have the general tab right here. This really just contains some general settings, like for example, language, mine is set on English. You can also do the updates. Now you might also have a second option here as well which is beta so release candidates which makes you potentially use unstable pre-releases as you can see versions so basically newer versions of obs that are still to come which are in a beta state still are pretty unstable as it says here as well but you can already try them in advanced which is pretty nice but of course generally speaking you want to set this to stable latest stable release so basically the latest release of obs and you can also check this automatically check for updates on startup now there might be cases where you prefer older obs settings don't worry you can always click remind me later on startup if you don't want the newest obs update because you have seen that there are some unstable stable features or anything you don't like about the newest version so don't worry you don't have to do that if you prefer for example older obs versions here are some things you can check for example to show like a dialogue when starting or stopping a recording and here are also some general settings where that aren't really that important so then we can go to appearance tab here now appearance tab is solely going to be the appearance of your whole obs right here so you have the theme you can change the style here as well you have different ones here if you prefer the light mode or like a classic or anything like that it's really up to you it's just a preference of course and always make sure at the end of every page that you click apply by the way and then click ok if you want to close it or just click apply if you want to go to another tab i'm going to the next tab which we are not going to use in this video but i do want to mention it which is obviously the stream tab where you have the service for example so you can choose between different platforms where you want to stream of course twitch or youtube for example or other platforms here can you connect your account or use a stream key in case so this of course is in case you're going to stream but we obviously only going to focus on recording here but i did want to mention that this tab is available output same here as you can see we have the first one which is going to be streaming but we're not going to focus on that so we're going to immediately go to the recording tab right here now first of all up here make sure that output mode is on advanced very important this allows us to have more settings and as you can see if you go down here we have type make sure it's standard also very important now then for example we have here the recording path so this is just something that's a preference to you as well you can click on browse right here if you want to see where the videos are going to go when they're done recording and where you want them to be saved so that's also a preference that you have to look at now, recording format is going to be very important here i've set it to mkv but later on it will be remuxed so basically it will create a second file that will be an mp4 and at the end i will only keep the mp4 and delete the mkv but that's only when i'm done recording i'll actually show you later on another setting that you need to check which is very important in order to get the remux so order that you make a mp4 file afterwards but i'll show you that a bit later on just make sure that right here for the moment the recording format is on matroska video mkv basically now don't do mp4 only this is because mp4 will not save anything if for example your power goes out anything happens with your computer it gets corrupt whatever might happen an mp4 file will not be saved until the point you are recording it'll be completely lost basically so that's in this case why i use mkv but you can also alternatively use for example fragmented mp4 which basically saves it in fragments so to a certain point but not necessarily the entire recording so that's why it's not entirely advised either it's already better than the normal mp4 but fragmented mp4 even though it saves it in fragments it's not going to necessarily save everything so that's also not really that advised and you also have hybrid theory which is basically almost just automatically remuxing the file in question up until the point you for example your computer crashed or anything like that or the power went out but it's still in beta it's still pretty unstable so you could test around with that but i wouldn't really advise you to use that as a standard setting at the moment i think the best option still at the time of this recording is going to be to set it to mkv and later on as i said i will show you how to put that to mp4 automatically now down here also very important the video encoder now you can also do the amd in this case if you use the amd you can do the hw h.265 and then hevc that's the one you can use if you want to go for the amd but if you actually have the option of for example an nvidia you can set it to the one that i have set it to which is going to be nvidia nvenc if you will h.264 that's going to be the best option in that case if you really have a good graphics card that's definitely what i would advise you to do uh, because i want to prioritize the gpu a bit over the cpu here so that's why if you choose for example the nvidia which is going to be your graphics card it will actually be the gpu so quite important there if of course you want that priority now then you also have another option which is going to be x264 now, i do advise this for people who have more of say a low-end pc who don't really have those nvidia graphics card or anything like that a bit of a more slower computer let's say with less options you can go for x264 but be aware when you have to put other settings down here and for example later on down there in the encoder settings choose cbr and put it between like 3000 and 10000 but i'll show you that just in a second but just be sure that if you do the n264 the best option will probably be to use the cbr and not put it over 10000 because you will 
in that case will get an encoding overloaded, which is something you definitely want to avoid. A video up here in the right corner that talks about how to actually avoid getting the encoding overloaded in case you're running into that error. It's a video where I explain a lot of solutions in there. So if you want to check it out, if you've been running into the problem, don't hesitate to check out that video. It might help you. But anyway, if you just continue here, as you can see, we have the audio encoder. Just put that to FF MPEG AAC, as you see as I did right here. Then you have the audio tracks. I use two, so I use my desktop audio. So anything that's sound within Windows, you know, music, anything that's like Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Basically just desktop audio. And the second one, of course, is going to be my microphone. Two audio tracks in this case. You can use multiple ones if you actually want to record something else apart. If you want to add some additional audio tracks. For me, this is enough. Then here, you don't have to touch anything. And as I said, we can go down here into the encoder settings. Very important, right off the bat, rate control. Now I have set it to constant QP or CQP as well. And I've set it to 17, as you can see here. Now you can do this between 15 and 20, let's say. But the lower you put it, the lesser the quality is going to be and the higher the quality will be better. So don't overdo this. You don't have to put this too low or too high because the file size is going to be way too big for nothing. So I like to put it a bit in the middle, like 17. And then was the other option that I talked about a little earlier, which was constant bitrate. As you can see right here, which is the CBR, basically. And this is something as I said, you, I wouldn't advise you to put over 10,000, but you can put it as low as 3,000, for example, which would help with the X264. Go for N264 up there, and then just here, do the CBR rate between 3,000 and 10,000, I would say. Around there. Really test it for yourself if you want. Generally, I don't think you need to go for 10,000, because as I said, it could provoke that encoding overloaded. But it's something to keep in mind, really. And if you feel like you don't have any problems with your computer over 10,000, you can obviously bring this up to 20, 30,000. You can, you can start to exaggerate the numbers, but really, once again, see if it works or not. But as I said, my is just to constant CQP here. In that case, you also want to put this key interval here to two seconds. Very important. The preset right here, I advise you to put it into the middle right here, around here. So you don't want to put this too high or too low. As fast as going to be low quality, it's more for low end PCs, but even low end PCs don't really need to go here, I would say. Generally stay around here and the best quality, we don't have to go this high. Middle ground is nice to have it on medium or slow right here. It's going to be the best one, but generally I don't think you have to really touch it. If you have a pretty decent PC, I would say, don't really touch this. So keep it on a slow, good quality. Tuning high quality, I would say for sure. This can just leave on two passes, high, and just keep the rest here really the same. There's nothing really else to change. So then we can actually go into the audio track tab. As you can see, the audio bitrate here, right here, are all set to 320. Now, I'm not using every track. As you saw, I only using the first two. The mine were just all set to 320 already. But definitely keep that number in mind. I do think it's worth. Normally, you should easily be able to handle that. So make sure that every track you use here is going to be set to 320 as an audio bitrate. But then we're actually going to go into the actual audio tab. That's going to be very important. Now, up here, you have the sample rate. Make sure it's set to 48,000 hertz right here 44 is not enough and everything that's going to go up to like 80 it's too much so just make sure it's 48 it's really the most recommended sample rate right here channels just make sure they're set to stereo here also very important the desktop audio so as i said earlier it's going to be my my audio within windows so anything that's like music or anything youtube related any sounds within windows so i just have it set to my speakers because well i just hear it in my headphones basically but it's because my speakers are my headphones because i plug them in my computer but you can of course also set it to something else here if you for example have a software like voice meter right here which allows you to change your voice as well you can actually select that one and you have to select to a specific channel here or if you have any other options you can do that as well of course then same for the microphone here i've just set it to my blue yeti microphone just the standard microphone that i have right here without anything on it i will show you a bit the filters that i use in obs itself later on but as a default microphone i just use my blue yeti microphone nothing else but same again if you for example use voice meter of course it's going to change your voice so you want to put it to one of these outs right here in case you're using that once again otherwise just set it to your default microphone same down here nothing really to change we're going to go to the video tab here. Now here, I especially make sure that as you can see right here, the base canvas resolution and the output scale resolution here, I have set them to 920 by 1080 and the aspect ratio is going to be 16 by 9. But it is very important that you distinguish those two. So my base canvas resolution is basically my monitor resolution, which is a 24 inch screen monitor. So basically 920 by 1080 pixels. So that's why I have set it to that. Base canvas, you don't have to change that. Just do the base canvas of your actual monitor. But the output scale resolution can actually be something different because the output scale resolution basically is going to be the resolution that it will be shown in the recording. So you can put this either lower, like for example, 1280 by 720 or higher, for example, towards more like the 4K. But if you want to change that, only change the output skilled resolution, never change the base canvas, only the output skilled resolution. As I said, you can put that lower or higher. Now, it depends on what you've set earlier in the output. If you, for example, in the recording tab, set it to something different, like for example, the N264, I'm pretty sure. You can actually change the downscale filter here. Now, you should have like, I think something like four options around there. I can play around with them, just see if other downscale works better. But really, it's, it's something you have to check for yourself. 
itself. I can't help you too much here. You just have to select the right one and just click apply and okay and see which one works best in your case. And then the FPS, I would advise you to really in most cases set it to 60 FPS. Even nowadays, even if you're like a lower end PC, 60 should be the minimum nowadays. There are cases where you can put it down to 30 if you really need to. But I think you would rather put the settings down than the FPS. You know, you can put the settings down and still keep 60 FPS in my opinion. Hotkeys window right here can also be very useful. Basically, you can click here and select a certain key on your keyboard. And whenever you click that key, we can, for example, start or stop streaming, start or stop recording, pause anything, even other chapters you can see right here. And for example, the hybrid MP4. Then actually, when you go into a editing software, where you actually do the montage, so basically the editing of a video, you'll be able to see those chapter marks in the editing. It doesn't work for every software where you edit in. I'm pretty sure that you can try it, for example, in like Premiere Pro. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that at the moment, DaVinci Resolve might work. So it's very optional, obviously, but basically what it comes down to here is that you can actually just select a key to start, stop, pause, anything right here. So it's always useful if you want that, of course. Accessibility here, same as like very on the parents thing. It's very optional. Obviously, you can play around with the colors here. You can also put them in a certain setting that helps you with color blindness, for example, which could also be useful as well. But here's just a preference that you want to set colors to mostly. But once again, that's very parents based. It's really up to you if you even want to change this. Generally, you probably wouldn't need to. Here in advanced, also, of course, a very important window. General, we have the process priority. So yeah, I have set it to above normal, actually. I would advise you to put it at least normal because process priority is going to be very important, obviously. It's going to give a priority to the OBS recording in question that you're doing, which you obviously want. So do keep that in mind. The render here, I've set it to direct 3D11. Same, you have to do the same thing. You don't really have to touch anything here. Make sure it's NV12 for the color. Color space, 7, 9, and the color range probably limit or full, you can see. Sometimes my recordings became a bit darker when I set it to full or limited, but that depends. So it was in the past. It's really just two settings, so just click on it and apply and see what it does to your recordings. And then just choose the one or the other. Now here, as I said earlier, and this is very important once again, this is the setting right here. This allows you, if you check this right here, automatically remux to MP4. When you're actually finished recording, it will you know, basically create an other file, which is going to be an MP4. It's a little box, it will load pretty quickly. If that's done, you can just check your recording folder. And if you see your MP4 is working great, you can actually go ahead and delete the MKV. But only if you're sure that the recording is finished and well, that the MP4 works well, you can just go ahead and then delete the MKV and only keep the MP4 file. But once again, you have to set it to MKV and definitely make sure that this one is checked in case you want the recordings to be saved 100% up until the point you are recording it. But that was very the last very important setting. And of course, once again, click here, apply, and then click OK every time. Here, I actually wanted to show you something else still. If you click on these three dots right here, you can actually go to advanced audio properties. So that's really what it says. It's a bit more advanced in terms of the audio. And as you can see, you can exactly see which tracks I was using. So once again, the first one, as I said, was for desktop audio. And the second one is my microphone. You can do a little bit of a boost here in dB. So put the volume a bit higher, if you will. Set these to mono. Even do the volume, the panning here. Here. So more on the left here and the right here. But of course, you generally want these to have it be in the middle. And then here, if you want to, for example, hear yourself in OBS, you can actually go ahead and do monitor and output. And if you click that, you'll actually be able to hear directly in live, basically, whatever you're recording. So that can be a microphone, but also, of course, you can hear back the desktop audio or whatever you're playing back in your headphones. So mostly you want to use that, of course, for your microphone. You can close this. And last but definitely not least, if I go right here to the three dots, I actually have some filters on my voice. There's really a bonus I wanted to show you guys. As you can see, I actually have these five right here. They're in a certain order because it's actually very important as well to have them in a certain order. Basically, if you want actually a detailed video about these filters and how they actually make your voice better. Because my voice, as you hear it right now, is actually with these OBS filters on it. And I really enjoy them. Now, of course, you have to appropriate to your own voice because we all have different voices. But once again, if you want that, there is a video up here in the right corner and how to actually make your voice better in OBS, which is also, of course, something really nice you can do. But anyways, guys, I really just wanted to go over a general OBS recording settings video. I haven't done one in a while. And I thought with the latest update here that was like a couple of days ago, the time of this recording. So the 31.0.4. So that's really an updated 2025 update on the best OBS recording settings that you can have at the moment. Of course, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Subscribe would also be really nice. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.